This week, I wanted to talk about finding the ideal party dress pattern that strikes the perfect balance between being flattering, comfortable, and easy to follow. With the festive season just around the corner, the hunt for the ultimate party dress can be quite a quandary. You want a pattern that's easy enough to follow in a relatively short time, with dressy design details that make people surprised when you say you've made it, and that'll make you feel like a million dollars when you're wearing it. And as an extra special festive gift, I've also got another special offer just for you. So join me for this episode as I share a pattern suggestion for a dress that I think is super flattering, extremely dressy, and feminine, and just enough of a challenge to make you feel like a sewing superstar. So stay tuned to find out more about this great new pattern from Made Label and to get your special offer discount code. Hello everyone, and welcome to the So Mindful podcast, where we dig into the tips and topics that will help you have great fun making clothes that make you feel fabulous. I'm your host, Jackie Blakemore of So Much More Fun, and I can't wait to share this week's illuminating episode with you. So let's roll the tape. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. So I've mentioned in recent podcasts that I'm trying to be a bit more organized and deliberate with my makes, partly to use up my fabric stash and partly to fill gaps in my wardrobe. So I'm thinking ahead to the party season and was delighted when I got the opportunity to be a tester for Made Label as part of the new launch of their website and some new patterns. The pattern options were all gorgeous and I chose the Lily Button dress because I thought it would make a great party dress option for the festive season and also a lovely day dress option for the spring too. So before I get into what I've been making, here's the lovely SJ O'Hara of May Label to share a quick message about what she's been up to. A little hello from May Label. We've just relaunched our new beautiful website and patterns out into the world. And delighted to have Jackie test our Lily button dress. We are super excited to release our new patterns with our extended size range of 4 to 30 in AU and UK sizing. And our instructions feature skills video for every sewing step. We're all about spreading that creativity and sewing your way to a designer wardrobe DIY style. I hope you love this episode. And love for you to visit our sewing corner of the internet and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for that, SJ. And hopefully we'll be getting our diaries aligned soon to get her on the podcast. But in the meantime, I'm excited to share my experience of testing the Lily Button dress, which is just one of the patterns that's now available on their newly updated website. So this is the first time I've managed to be successful in applying to pattern test. So thank you to Made Label for that opportunity. It was slightly different to just making for myself as I felt obliged to stick to the pattern as it was designed other than fitting adjustments. And I also had to remember to properly read the instructions so that I could feed back on them and to document a bit more thoroughly my feedback at each stage. There was also a deadline which included allowing time to finish and photograph my lovely finished item. But I did really enjoy it and I hope to get the opportunity to do more in the future. There were a few patterns to test as part of their relaunch and I opted for the Lily Button dress because it comes in midi and mini options and I really liked the cute frill around the bottom of the skirt and I am a sucker for a flutter sleeve. I also liked that it was a style that I knew I would wear both as a day dress and also to dress up for a night out. It is described as follows. With a timeless feminine silhouette, the lily dress pattern features flutter sleeves and a delicate frill skirt detail. Elevate its classic elegance using fabric covered buttons. The dress can be sewn mini or midi length. The features include bust and waist darts, loop over buttons, centre front closure, flutter sleeve, a waist tie and a delicate flounce detail. The sewing level is described as advanced beginner, which I think is a good description. This is a PDF pattern and it comes with a few PDFs covering the pattern pieces for the two size ranges, the instructions for how to sew with standard seams or with French seams, 
and extensive information on how to pick the right size and fabric requirements, which you can actually download before you even buy the pattern, so I'd highly recommend doing that. So what fabric and notions does it require? Well, it's an unlined dress designed for woven non-stretch fabric. Because of the flutter sleeve and the frill, it's perfect for lightweight fabrics with some drape. Or if you want more impact, you could use a medium weight fabric. The recommended fabrics in the pattern are rayon, silk, linen, crepe de chine and slub. And the pattern instructions have a great visual chart of these recommendations that summarises their qualities and how easy or hard they are to work with, which I really loved. <coughs> For the smallest size in the mini length, you need around 2.2 meters of 51 inch or 130 centimeter wide fabric. Up to the largest size at a midi length, which takes 3.9 metres. In addition to the fabric, you'll also need 12 millimetre or half inch buttons. You need 10 for the mini length and 20 for the midi length dress. You need about 0.6 metres of sewing interfacing. And if you want to make your own bias binding, it also recommends a bias tape maker sized approximately 18 millimetres. I have some rose coloured viscose fabric that I bought a whole bolt of for making wearable toiles, and you will have seen that on my other makes, I'm sure. It was ideal for this pattern and I loved how it turned out. I did buy a few sets of buttons as I wasn't sure what I really wanted. I ended up with some silver coloured dome shaped buttons that are on a shank. I also bought self covered buttons, but the viscose was a bit too thin and didn't seem to work very well with those, so I felt that the silver buttons were the better option. Just a note on covered buttons, if I had had more time, I would have got covered buttons from DM Buttons. You can send them a piece of your fabric, choose the button size and style that you want, and they cover them and send them back to you. I'll put a link in the show notes, but I'd highly recommend them. I used them for a dress for my diploma, and they looked amazing. In terms of sizing, the size range goes up to a size 30, which is equivalent to a 64-inch bust at the largest cup size. It's split into two, so there's some overlap in the middle. It has five cup options across the whole size range. My measurements at the time of making are 36 and a half inches bust, 31 and a half inch waist, and 41 inch hip. I ended up making the size 12 in the cup size A. There's a lot of really helpful information and video links in the instructions to help you pick out the right pattern size. When I started making it, I followed the instructions for my measurements, but then my ego and past experiences got in the way when the result came up as me being the A cup size. My bra size is 32 double D, and I have been stung before by following the recommendations for cup size in a pattern and it not being right. So initially, I cut the bodice in a 10 C cup. Fortunately, I was testing the fit at each stage and spotted quite quickly that I'd made a mistake as the fit on the bust of the 10 C cup was much too baggy under the bust. I recut the bodice pieces and lo and behold, when I followed the recommendations from the pattern and made the 12 A cup, it worked a treat. I have since watched the video that is now linked to the pattern and it's great. So when you do try it, I recommend watching that even if you're a seasoned sewist like me. There's a lot of information about how to check other measurements like the bodice length from the neck to the waist. I did check these before making and the sizing did come up a good match. In terms of techniques for this pattern, there are quite a few techniques in this dress that create lovely details and make it interesting to sew. There are instructions to do the whole dress with French seams. I didn't choose that as I was making it for the first time and was under a bit of time pressure, but when I make it again, I will try that option. It uses sewn interfacing for the front neckline one thing to note here is that with any V neckline, you are cutting your fabric on the bias, which makes it more prone to stretching out, so try to handle it as little as possible. The beauty of the sew-in interfacing is that it doesn't stretch, 
So when you attach it to your fabric, be sure to ease your fabric to match the length of the interfacing and not the other way around. This will ensure that you get a beautifully fitting v-neckline. The pattern has darts and a set-in sleeve. It uses bias binding to finish the whole of the inside edge of the dress, which I haven't really done before as I've previously just used facings. And whilst it does add time to create your bias strips, and there are instructions in the pattern on how to create continuous binding, it does give it a really lovely finish. It uses rolled hems on the sleeves and frill because they have long edges, and so the hems need to be small. I did follow the instructions for how to do the hem on the sleeves, but found it more time consuming than using my rolled hem foot, so I used that instead for my frills. Even on the non French seam version, the standard seam version, you do still use a French seam to attach the frill to the bottom edge of the skirt. I think this is such a lovely touch, as you do see the inside of the bottom of the garment as you move and walk, and I think that finish is much prettier than just overlocking. And finally, you also have rouleau button loops and thin ties on this dress. I was quite nervous about doing the button loops because I haven't really done that before especially not trying to get the positioning of 20 loops consistent down the front of a dress. But there's a really brilliant button loop template and accompanying video that actually made that part of the construction one of the easiest parts of the dress. So there are quite a few different techniques involved, but don't be put off by that at all. The instructions are really good and there are videos for pretty much every aspect that you might need. So what did I discover or learn as I made this dress? Well. As I mentioned, I hadn't done button loop thing before and I have struggled in the past with button fronted dresses to get the buttons to sit right. But I actually found that although the button loop option requires more buttons and loops than the equivalent buttonhole closure option, it was way more forgiving and sits much better on me when I'm wearing it. So I'm definitely a fan. I don't do French seams very often and whilst I know the theory I definitely need more practice as I didn't properly trim the edge of my first seam allowance and as my fabric is prone to fraying I did end up with wisps sticking out after I'd sewed the second seam but I'll know better next time. I could also improve my rouleau loops. I think mine came out a bit wider than I would have liked and I pressed them which I probably shouldn't have done as that made them wider and flatter so I won't make that mistake again. I also got to dust off some of my tools that I haven't used for ages. So I have a rouleau loop turner, which was actually really helpful, my bias binding maker, and my sew-in interfacing, which I don't normally use because I usually use iron-on. In terms of things I didn't like about it, or things that I would change, well the pattern pieces do have notches marked as triangles going outside the pattern piece, which is not my personal favourite, as I think that takes a little bit more time. And I think if I made it again, I would raise up the V-neck as after wearing it, it is lovely, but it is a little bit too low when I move around for my personal taste. Other than that though, apart from my mistake in choosing the size, I didn't have to change anything. Once I did choose the right size, the fit was really good. And it was nice to be able to make a single size without having to do lots of blending of sizes and fitting alterations. So in the UK, the pattern costs £11.50. And it's 22 Australian dollars and 14 US dollars, with lots of other currencies also available. And that also includes access to all the video tutorials, which I think is really great value. But I also have a special offer for you. If you use the code so mindful at checkout, which is all capital letters, one word, then you'll get an amazing 30% off. How great is that? The offer code is also valid until the 31st of December. But I'd say don't wait around, get this onto your project list. All in all, as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of this pattern and the work that's gone into creating the resources that go with it. I will be making it again, both for the spring and summer, and I'd also like to try it in maybe a linen blend or a viscose twill for the cooler months. This is a great dress and it does incorporate some lovely design details that I think give it a really feminine edge. If you'd like to try out one of the Made Labels patterns for free, then you can also download the Frankie wrap skirt, which also has a lovely frill detail and it's completely free. And there's also a really comprehensive sewing project planner on the Made Label website, which allows you to sketch out and plan your makes. I thought it was great, so be sure to check that out too. 
I will, as always, put all of the details into the show notes for you with links and some pictures of my finished dress. If you do make this or any of the other made label patterns, then I'd love to see how they turn out and get your feedback. So be sure to email me or DM me with pictures. I hope you found this review helpful. If you have, please do share it with your sewing friends. I'm also now putting these podcasts onto YouTube, so if you prefer that format, then please be sure to subscribe to the So Much More Fun YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to chatting with you again really soon. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Check out the show notes in the description area of your podcast app and click to follow or subscribe or head over to sewmindful.com forward slash podcast, which is S-E-W-M-I-N-D-F-U-L dot com, where you can also sign up for an email reminder so that you don't miss out on any juicy episodes. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, then please help others find us by leaving a review if you love this episode. And I'm always excited to find out what you got from the episode and how you plan to use the tips. And finally, if you have a question, feedback or a topic you'd like me to investigate, then you can also email me at hello at so much more So until next time, stay gorgeous and have so much more fun. <laughs>